Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for being here today. This is a good day for the University of Kansas, and we're grateful to have a chance to share some words with you. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, our entire university community leadership and athletic department have taken this six, nearly six year IARP process uh, incredibly seriously. And I'm thankful to the IRP for recognizing the facts and in, 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 inst, instituting a thorough and objective process. Today's decision by the IRP supports what we have said from day one, that the major infractions we were accused of were unfounded, and specifically the panel decision unequivocally <clears throat> confirms that our coaches were not involved nor had knowledge of payments to student athletes. While doing our due diligence throughout this process, we did acknowledge lesser infractions for which we have self-imposed penalties, if you'll recall from last fall. And regarding the additional penalties announced in today's decision, we accept those and we'll move forward. Significant resources, energy, time have been given into this process and it put a great deal of stress on our leadership team, our coaches, our student athletes to ultimately get to this outcome today. And I wanna be clear that we continue to stand firmly and believe firmly in our compliance program at the University of Kansas and our compliance staff. And we'll continue to invest in and support that incredible team as we move forward. I'm also very, very proud of the character and integrity in which our coaches and staff operate, including and in, in even highlighting our men's basketball program, Coach Self, Coach Townsend, the entire, the entire staff around them. Uh, there's a culture of compliance that really is firmly ingrained in our entire department and certainly in our men's basketball program. I want to express sincerest gratitude to Chancellor Gerard for his unwavering support and leadership throughout this and to Coach Self for his leadership and the way in which he's handled a, a, at times certainly difficult process um, and his leadership of the very best basketball program in the country. Coach Self's always had our full trust and confidence in how he runs his program that has never wavered and it, and it will not certainly go forward. Uh, we're excited to turn the page. We feel really good about all the, uh, the things that are going on within the department, the momentum, certainly the upcoming season with this uh, preseason number one men's basketball program. And we know our fans feel that culture and that excitement. And I'll just conclude, conclude by emphasizing this point that we do things the right way at the University of Kansas, and that will continue to be a hallmark as we move ahead. Hey y'all, hope everybody's <coughs> well today. Uh, uh, I'd like to comment on the back of what Travis has said. Uh, I'd, I'd first like to start by thanking the IRP for their professionalism and the fair review of the facts throughout this entire process. I also want to make sure I express my sincere gratitude to Chancellor Gerard and to Travis Goff for their support, leadership, and alignment that exists within our university and our athletic department. And I'm very, very proud to be the head basketball coach here. As Travis said today, as Travis just said, today is a good day for Kansas basketball. And the findings that the panel found reiterate that our staff acted with integrity and honesty and had no knowledge of payments to student athletes. While this has been a very long process, I'm appreciative that it has ended and where it has ended. And I am eager to move forward without this cloud hovering above our program. Okay, we'll open it up for questions. Microphones on both sides. Hey, Coach uh, Shea Will of Lanes.com. You, you said all along for, for, for many years that when this was all said and done, that, that, that story would come true. How does it feel today? Are you happy with how it all played out and um, now that it's over? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy that it's over. Uh, I, I'm, I'm certainly uh, happy with the end results, and at the same time, uh, don't feel like a celebration mode. 
because this is exactly what we thought the end result would be years ago and it's taken such a long period of time to get here. But it, I, I am pleased with the findings because the findings are accurate. Travis, Henry B. Simon Morris, Journal World. You mentioned the self-imposed penalties. Now that the case is concluded, I wanted to ask, what went into the decisions of selecting those penalties as well as the juncture at which you imposed them? I think if, when you rewind back, probably, gosh, it's been 15, 16, 17 months ago when we were discussing at that juncture going into the fall, uh, whether or not to self-impose. Um, I think it was a lot of it was in the spirit of just wanting to move forward, wanting to have finality to this. I think that was an anchor of those discussions. And we used some of the guidelines the NCA provides in terms of penalties to help align with where we landed with our self-imposed penalties. And it feels as if they were probably on the uh, heavier end of things, but we were willing to do so in order to give everyone the best chance to move forward. Mick Schaefer, KSHB 41. Coach, do you feel like the, um, the vacated wins, the banner, the streak, all the stuff that goes along with that, did you expect that and, and do you feel like that was fair? Uh, I actually did feel like it was fair and I actually felt like it should have been done. Uh, uh, by the rule, uh, we had a player participate while ineligible due to an illicit payment that we knew nothing about, but it was still he was still ineligible while participating. So the 15 wins that uh, occurred while Silvio participated in the 2018, he didn't, he didn't play in 17, but the 2018, uh, spring semester, uh, 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 I believe, are warranted to be taken away because that is the rule. And if you take away the wins, you naturally take away a banner uh, uh, because the banner wouldn't exist without the wins. Are you guys forced to take it down and all that stuff? How does that work? Uh, well, I haven't talked to anyone uh, 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 how that works, but it will. I'm sure maintenance will take care of that for us. But 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 that 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 was something that. Uh, uh, was imposed today that was ex that I certainly expected. For both of you guys, what does this say about the NCAA and this whole period that they went through where you had some schools, they put the hammer down for seemingly nothing, and then others, can you talk about the inconsistency and what this did to college athletics? I'll, I'll, Go ahead. I, I, I'm not gonna speak to, uh, Neil, what's happened at other schools. All I can speak to is what happened and did not happen at the University of Kansas. And certainly uh, we fell true to our initial statements on, on, on what we thought uh, 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 did or did not transpire. So, so uh, and I'm not gonna speak to the NCAA, I'll let, I'll let Travis do that. But this, this was a, a certainly a long process that, that uh, uh, six years seems a long time to get to this point, and we're not the only school that endured this long process, as you know. I just would add to that that when you look at the IR, IARP cases of the last couple years, that there's a, a degree of consistency with how those were approached in that objective outside lens that they apply to the, each of those cases. Well, you, when you guys did do this, the self-imposed penalties, particularly suspension, you couldn't comment on the time because this was ongoing, right? I'm just wondering, you know, from the outside, it seems like when you do have self-imposed penalties, that does imply at least some measure of guilt. What, what do you think you guys could have done differently? Uh, I don't think it implies a measure of guilt at all. Uh, what I think it implies is we were doing everything possible to move forward and put this behind us and at the same time doing what was in the best interest of our present student athletes and future student athletes to make sure they were not impacted in any negative way whatsoever. Uh, uh, um, I was okay with the self-impositions because as the leader of this program and the head coach, it's my responsibility to protect, preserve, look after, our present student athletes and future student athletes in a way that it doesn't impact uh, their experience in any, in any way, shape, or form negatively at the University of Kansas. And so in order to do that, the, the talks and the self-impositions was a way 
to make sure or to give us a better chance that that occurred. And just what have the past six years been like? Well, there's been some good times in the past six years. Uh, 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 you know, the thing, the thing about it is in, in, in my coaching journey, uh, uh, I've had a lot of good. And I've had far more good than not good. But you understand as a coach, you can't expect for it always to be good. And you deal with the things that aren't so good. I've said this many times, I love my profession. And I would not be, I would, I'd rather be doing this and impacting youth than any other thing I could possibly do uh, 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 with my time. So it sucked. But over a course of 35 years, don't you expect to have some periods of time that aren't that great? And so uh, uh, I think that myself and my staff have handled it very maturely, to be honest with you. And we've dealt with this in a way that we're gonna go through this. This is how it is in the short term. It won't last forever, but it's not an excuse to impact how we do our job. Coach, I'm, I'm wondering just from a recruiting standpoint, six years, how impactful could today's decision be or potentially be moving forward? You know, Shay, I think uh, from a recruiting standpoint, there's no, there's no doubt this has impacted recruiting. Uh, uh, I'm not sure it's impacted recruiting recently as much as it was three or four years ago because the reality of it is I don't think this is as talked about today as what it was, you know, three or four years ago. So I, 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 I think, and, and, and my staff knows this, I think our recruiting will be impacted favorably, but I don't know if it'll be a huge impact because I think I think my staff still done a pretty good job in in, in the uh, the last uh, few years uh, 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 recruiting players that are difference makers here at the University of Kansas. Bill, I don't want you to go player by player or anything like that, but you've talked a lot about the impact on your kids, and I just wonder with this group specifically how happy you are they don't have to hear about this but also over that time all those guys that had to answer questions and have this hanging over i mean how happy are you for them too? well this group we, we we met with our group today uh when we found out what was going on before we knew what the actual uh uh, uh findings would be and told them uh, basically uh, uh that we didn't know exactly what to expect and to be honest with you the vast majority that have been here know that we've been doing this for a while. Some of the players we have actually talked to about during the recruiting process, the young guys, that it doesn't register with them as far as being a, 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 a anything that could impact them. So because it was so long ago, some of these kids were in, in, in uh, junior high or maybe the end of elementary school when, 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 when this started. So, so uh, I don't. I think that the, the players that impacted the most uh, were the ones, you know, in that 19 and 20 or 21 season. But since then, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel quite the same to me because it's been such a long time ago. Sure. And you, you mentioned the maturity of your staff. How about those guys, those those players, and, and how they handled it as well? They were asked a lot, obviously, um, not as much as you probably, but. My staff? No, no, your players. Those players that you were just talking about. Oh yeah, well, 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 those, 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 those guys. Uh, uh, when, when you, when you, uh, when you coach a group of, of young men, regardless of sport or, or young ladies, uh, you know, it becomes more than a team. It becomes a family. And so, with, with, with a family, you deal with ups and you deal with downs. And this is something that we have dealt with, but we've been very straightforward and and forthright and honest with our guys and, and where this is and how it could potentially impact them. And, and they've handled it like you would think a, a mature young man would. So uh, uh, very, very proud of them uh, uh, because if, if you go back and look at it, this could be a cloud that you always have something in the back of your, of your mind thinking, well, what if? And they eliminate the what if and press forward. And I think we as a staff had done the same thing. My staff did the same thing as well. Travis, I know this predates you, but I'm wondering how this case impacted at all the way you would have coaches interact with interests outside the university, not just Adidas, but like other people who are in that same sort of domain. Well, I think uh, Henry, it, again, we've had a long-standing commitment to rules education, to compliance, and that's really truly been embedded in the culture and the fabric. Um, certainly when this uh, 
uh, case presented itself. This department, again, way before my arrival, did a lot of things to continue to enhance uh, the way it viewed, um, whether it be partners, sponsors, et cetera, et cetera. But it was just complementing things that were already in place. And so I think um, as the, the world of college athletics has evolved, we continue to keep compliance front and center. We've done so in, in NIL and in every other aspect. Um, and I don't think it's really had a profound change on how we've operated because we've already been at a really high level in that space. Bill, you've mentioned the cloud a couple of times, the cloud of just this hanging over you. I wonder if you feel like at this point with the penalties that have been uh, I guess enforced, it was the cloud more of a penalty than anything that you're actually you know, dealing uh, I think that's point. a great question. I would say uh, uh, the unknown uh, 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 was, was probably as much of a penalty as anything, you know, going going a, a, a period of time that we did with the unknown and not knowing how to address it or or how to attack it. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, I'll make one thing clear, the, 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 the penalties that were imposed today were basically the vacation of wins. Uh, the, the three years probation and, and, and the, uh, the other penalties that, that have been discussed or self-imposed penalties that we knew uh, 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 that we were going to deal with because we had self-imposed those before the ruling ever came out. Travis, could this happen again? And do you get the sense that maybe you, there's been so much change at the NCAA level? Do you think that with the changes that this, I mean, they drug your program through the mud for six years and, and you're not the only one. Do you think that the process is gonna be expedited so that this doesn't happen again? Well, I know that's one of the things they're looking at in particular as it relates to NIL is the enforcement process to ensure that um, in particular in these more egregious NIL inducement situations that they have a process that's a lot more efficient. So they're in the throes of, I think, building that out. I'm optimistic that it will be a much improved, uh, much more efficient, much more timely exercise going forward. So I think that's one of the, the positives coming out of this long journey and, and uh, uh, putting a conclusion to the IARP segment of enforcement. And um, I think there's a chance for it to be better at the end of the day. I think we're optimistic on that. We will have contributed to a better exercise. Let's put it that way. Any more questions? I wondered, um, looking back, the three-day hearing, how important was that and how professional was the IARP? And when you left after that marathon, three days, how did you feel? The, it was incredibly important, Gary. The, the team, some of whom are here today, were exceptional in helping us prepare. We've got such a great team within athletics up on campus, um, certainly the legal team involved. So the significance of preparation uh, the alignment, it was so important for us to be fully aligned going into that hearing, um, consistent with our approach, uh, and that's how it played out over the course of those three days. And, and the IRP, I think in particular, you asked about was incredibly professional and, and ran, I think, a, a really effective hearing over that time. You want to add to that? But I, 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 I agree. I think uh, uh, in today's time, and not, not that I'm an expert on this, but having a, a, a group as aligned as we did under the leadership of, of our chancellor, uh, and I'm talking about uh, all the different legal teams and, and everybody that's being represented to go into that. I, I felt like that we, it was uh, very important and, and significant and certainly uh, uh, was done with great professionalism on all fronts. All right, thanks everyone. All right.